Oh, welcome. Welcome guys. So put your name in the chat. If you, uh, if you are, so we got the coaches and we have the, uh, the graduates, if you will, that were able to make it today, put your name in the chat. If you're a graduate of, uh, the coaching program for the last 60 days with one of our coaches. So I kind of see who, who is who here. Um, okay. Marco, welcome. Marco, can you hear me? Yep. You got a dog? So, you know, that's Aaron. <laughs> that's Aaron. Let's see. Where's Marco? I don't see you. I'm here. There you are. I see you. I see you. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Cool. Um, yeah, tell tell me where you're from, how long you've been selling, and all that good stuff. I am from Los Angeles. I am from the San Fernando Valley, which is about 20 minutes north of downtown LA. We met you two weeks ago when you were out here in Anaheim. We took a picture with my wife. And um, I've been selling for 23 years. Okay, great, great. So coming from a background of, uh, like you've been in real estate 23 years? I've had, well, yeah, I did. I've had my life for 23 years, but then I left for about 10 years and came back four years ago. Okay, cool. And so, um, and so, you know, coming from a, you know, a place of, you know, 23 years in the business and everything, like, give me your review, basically, like, give me your two cents here on like what we've done, uh, you know, with you here, um, you know, with the, with the, with the coaching program with the 60 days and all that stuff. Give me your interpretation from a, a longtime veteran agent in the business. I think it's a perfect, I did the survey today and, um, I think it's perfect. I mean, 60 days, I think it was perfect. I didn't really follow it a hundred percent. My coach is uh, Marilyn and I do a lot of door knocking. So I think what you guys are doing is great. Um, I haven't been calling yeah. as I told her, but I am going to start calling soon. I'm getting my numbers from Red X and all that stuff. So I'm getting all that in place, but I think the program itself is wonderful. I mean, it, what yeah. it taught me was the discipline that I needed to have. It taught me to kind of have systems in place, which I keep hearing systems for years and I never implement anything. Mm -hmm. So she took the time to help me with the um, constant contact and I was able to get my emails out. So all of that for me has been just a life changer. Right, right. Okay, cool. So, and like, I hope you understand that, you know, the 60 days is basically a, uh, like, a, um, like it's a situation where, okay, let's throw a lot of stuff at you mm -hmm. to try to help you figure out what works best for you. Right? right. It's not, it's not necessarily like a cold calling program. It's a, it's a, let, let's try to figure out what works best for you. Right. But at the end of the day, we have to understand that every activity that we do in terms of lead gen, regardless if it's in person, online, or voice to voice is going to come back to a voice to voice conversation before anything else is going to happen. Like the voice to voice conversation is literally the gatekeeper of the deal, it is. right? Regardless of how you chop it up. So like we have to focus on, okay, how do we help agents become better communicators and increase their skill level on the phone? Because right. that's really going to be the make or break it for them. You know, people don't feel comfortable with them on the phone, regardless if it's a warm lead, cold lead or whatever sphere of influence referral. I mean, even if it's a referral and the person already loves you, if you can't give them that great vibe on the phone that you're going to take care of them, there, there is probably a 50, 50 of the most. Right? right. 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 So my point is like with you being this door knocker and if that's what you really are wanting to do and that's what works best for you. And you feel like that's what makes you feel good as far as what the results give you and that, you know, Avenue of Legion. And that's what we want you to do. Right. It's not about the cold calling. It's about, understanding that we're here to help people right. and we want to build our brand as large as we can by talking to as many properties as we can, how we do that. Honestly, I do not care. Right. right. No, I understand. Yeah, we got it. Today we were door knocking when Marilyn called me and today we talked to like four people that we've talked to before, but these conversations were like 15, 20 minutes deep. So when we walked away, my wife said, this is what Ricky says, you know, it's all about the relationship and it feels good that you're able to talk to them and not saying anything about selling. And they're the ones who actually bring up stuff. So it was very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting mm -hmm. having that approach and not ever mentioning the fact that you want to buy or sell. It's up to right. them to bring it up. So, yep. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so you say you door knocked and talked to four people you already talked to. Does this mean you're door knocking the same neighborhood again? We, yeah, we have a farm area, but we hadn't seen them. We saw them prior to the pandemic. And then after that, we hadn't seen some of these people. And um, so the, these people are people that we talked to before briefly. And today we just, they invited us into their house. So it was, it was very, um, it was very rewarding. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's an interesting thing to ask. That it's a farm area that yeah, he because we do use a lot of farm area. My dog was going crazy for a second for no reason. So. <laughs> All right, guys, if you I have five of them. If you're just tuning in, guys, and you didn't put your name down as a graduate of the uh, program, just put your name in the chat there. Um, so I come around to you. Well, cool, Marco. Well, listen, man, is there anything I can do for you, man? You got any questions or anything Anything no, we can no. do to help you further at this point? No, I think I, it's just a, a fact of just getting – I, I got to get started. I want to get started in calling. That's I think – hi, Ricky. I think that we <laughs> want to implement the calling like a hybrid, not just the door knocking. Okay. Because yeah. we want to reach more people because like you asked uh, the question as far as are these people, you know, it is a farm area that we work. Yeah. Um, so it's like 3,500, you know, homeowners or what have you, but we want to get into other areas, not just that farm area. So we can talk to more people. So we do want to implement the calling as well. Right. Well, my first thought when I hear you, you know, door knocking the same neighborhood is why in the world will we do that? But then when I hear that you're having these long conversations, they're inviting you into the house and stuff. I'm thinking, man, this is great. Yeah, right? it was, today, you know, it was like it, it, this particular neighborhood we were in today. It's taken them a little bit to warm up to us. <laughs> now that they they're seeing us in the neighborhoods more often. Now it was like, come in and see what I've done to my house. I, you know, they're showing us improvements they've done. So the, yeah. the relationship is being created, which is what we're mm -hmm. happy about, that we're we, yeah. we creating that relationship. Right, right. And, you know, they may go on to use another agent. They may come on to use you. See, our job is to put our name in as many hats as possible. That's what right? I take you. Like exactly. our, our name may get pulled out of that hat or it may not. Another agent's name may get pulled out of that right. hat. But if yeah. our name is in enough hats... Our name's yeah. going to get pulled here and there. That's the point, right? It has to. It's, 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 it's it simple to. math, right? It's simple That's math. Right. You put your name in enough hats. Some, at some Law, point, law of averages, right, pulled. Ricky? Right. That's what I work. Sounds good. Thank you. Cool, cool. No, I would just kind of um, work towards, maybe you can refer back to Maryland, you know, but kind of work towards a solid routine right that you Never. are you're literally um you're going under your means in terms of what you can handle a lot of people want to max out their schedule mm -hmm. and they want to they want to completely max it out where there's no room for error and then if they're off by a little bit because of that little error here or there then they feel like a a, a loser or they feel like a failure right whereas if you go below your means in terms of what you can handle with what you try to schedule in a day mm -hmm. and then if you happen if that if that if that room if that error happens in a positive way like you got a little bit more done than what you planned on now you feel even though you got less done in that scenario than the first scenario now you feel like a champion right sure, right sure. but honestly right. at the end of the day it's just consistency you know right. That's 100%. what we have to focus on. Yeah. It is. Like I would rather, I would rather see people make calls for an hour a day for five years straight than say, I'm going to make calls for three hours a day. You know what I mean? Or, or six hours a day. Sure. Yeah. Well, even if they said it every day, because every day you're, you're not going to, that's just not feasible. Ah, right? makes sense. Makes it's sense. just not feasible. I'd rather, I'd rather see you say, <laughs> you know, I'm going to make calls three hours a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday or something. Right. right. Well, Friday's a follow-up day. Like you're just coming through all your notes and following up with everyone. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas Monday you're doing circle prospecting Tuesday, you're doing expired Thursday. You're doing, you know, for sale by owners or sphere of influence or internet leads. And Friday is just a follow-up day. But then Wednesday is kind of like your reaction day. You know how you, you jump three feet every time your phone rings when all this stuff, well, during your call sessions, you can't do that. Right. right. But after lunch, you can. And then all day Wednesday, you can, right? Mm -hmm. I would take Wednesday yes. to kind of do my weekly email and really try to uh, um, like handle, all, put all, the, all those fires, you know what I mean? Right. And have a bunch of meetings and stuff like that. That's what I've been telling my agent for lately. 
you know, Monday, Tuesday calls, Thursday, Friday calls, Friday be a follow-up day. Okay. All right, cool. Thank well, you. Good, man. Thank you. Good to, uh, good to see you guys, man. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for completing the program. I, I hope it, Thank I hope you. the philosophies continue to, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. help you develop, you know, yeah. So, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely reach out to me, Marilyn, whatever we can do to help. That's what we're here for. Okay. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Ricky. Cool. Hey, if you guys just joined and you were a graduate and you're not a coach, put your name in the chat so I can see who we are. We don't have that many, so I'll be able to talk to each and every one of you. Steven. Hey, how's it going? How you doing, bro? I'm doing pretty good. All right, man. Have you ever screamed at anybody? Have I what? Ever got mad or screamed at anybody? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> I wouldn't think so, dude. Like I can notice that. Like first word you said, man. Like we got to get you out of that shell, man. Is there a door somewhere close to you? You need to like grab that thing and slam it as hard as you can and see how it feels. <laughs> I bet when you walk in a room, bro, and you close the door, you like make sure that thing don't make a sound, don't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I know you're tight, man. And I'm telling you right now, I gotta snap you out of that, bro. So tell me about yourself. Uh, well, um, I live here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, I've been selling just under three years now. Um, we met in Nashville. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that's about it. <laughs> okay. What, how many deals you do this year so far? Um, so far, two transactions this year. Nine last year. What are you doing and, for, uh, um, what are you doing for like work to, to pay your bills and stuff? Uh, so I work part-time at FedEx in the morning from four to nine in the morning. And then I start real estate after that. Okay. From four to nine in the morning. Yep. So you work five hours at, at FedEx and then you've got the rest of the day. Yep. And yes, then you sir. go to bed at what time to get up at two thirty to go to work? Usually 10. Yeah. As long as my daughter didn't keep me up all night. Then <laughs> that might be How a little old is she? She's nine months. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. My daughter's two and a half, man, and she is something, dude. She is so funny. <laughs> You're going to love it. Yeah, it's All fun, right. right. Okay. What can I do to help you? Uh, well, the uh, this program has really helped me. It, I don't know. It's, it's more of a, um, I, I don't know. I want to call it luck, but it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't making phone calls. Okay. So, I was uh, cold calling neighborhoods. You see the I sign? Had... I don't have it up here. It's it the old sign, right? The harder you work, the luckier you get. It seems to be the truth because, I, like I said, I was calling uh, neighborhoods, and I ended up like accidentally cold calling one of a you know a top agent here in Bowling Green, and uh, it just happened to be that she was taking a vacation the following week, and she saw that I was cold calling, so she's like, "Hey, do you want to help me out?" And ever since then, I'm, I've been just helping her out at the same time. So she's been sending me leads and long story short, uh, at the beginning of the program, I had nothing under contract. Now I have five under contract. Oh my um, gosh. So it's, I mean, for me, it's, it's starting to go pretty good. I just hope to continue it. I hope it's not like a spurt. And then it are just, these, like, are these, uh, are these leads all from this lady? Not all of them. Uh, three of them are mine. Okay. And those were, where'd those come from? Uh, some of sphere of influence, which I was calling, and that's how I got one of those. And then a uh, got a land lead, like a land, uh, not a listing, but a buyer trying to buy some land. Okay, cool. Call. Take me through your day. You get home at nine thirty or ten from work, and then what do you do? You take a shower, and then I instantly come here to the office. Right. And I, but then uh, what do you do there? I make my phone calls. I usually get done with my phone calls about one thirty or two. And then at that point, are you using a dialer? Yes, the storm dialer. Are you doing circle prospecting, expired stuff like that? Circle prospecting. I was, I was trying to do for sale by owners, man. I, I'm going to be honest. For sale by owners, for some reason, I know it sounds really dumb, but for sale by owners and expired, really just, uh, I don't know if it's because I'm just not used to uh, to calling, but <laughs> I, I just I, I hate calling for sale by owners and expires. Okay. All right. Well, let's pretend like I'm an expired, right? Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, you're going to call me. I want to hear what you're saying to an expired. Okay. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. I'll, I'll do my best. I don't, I don't call the expires, but, uh, Hey, this is Steven with Keller Williams Realty. How are you doing today? Doing good. Okay, good. Uh, well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. 
Uh, the reason why I was giving you a call is I saw that your house recently expired, and I was just trying to see what happened with that. Okay. Um, yeah, no, we, we don't know what happened with it. We're still trying to figure out what we want to do. Okay, gotcha. Are you guys that, – see, that's where I kind of – like. Oh, do I just ask what your plans are at that point or – Gotcha, man. Now, I just wanted to hear like what your pitch was to him, right? Okay. So, like your pitch is perfect, right? In terms of like what happened with that, right? I think I would trim it down to less words. Um, but like, also, I'm sure this because this is for the moment, you're not going through all the motions, right? I'm sure you ask him if this is who you're talking to. And then yeah. you say who this is. Do you do you do the weather thing? Uh, sometimes I do on my circle prospecting, but like I said, I don't call expires too much. Should I do it on that as well? Yes. It should be exactly the same, right? It should all be exactly the same because that actually breaks the ice that makes them kind of calm down. Like, okay, this isn't going to be a sales call. You know what I mean? Okay. Right. And then it's like, okay, but why are you calling? Well, cool. Well, listen, I won't take it too much of your time, but I saw your house was for sale. I have a house on whatever road was for sale. What happened with that? Or what, what was the story there? Right. Now, are you calling old expireds or just brand new expireds? Yeah, I was calling brand new expireds. Okay. So that's that's a whole different ballgame too. When you compare like old, like one year old to like brand new, where they're getting called by 10 agents an hour, right? Then that's a little different. They're a little, they're in a little different mindset than when they expired a year ago, right? So like okay. this is what you need to do. You need to go into Red X, you need to call them. You need to say, I want all the expireds withdrawns and cancels for 10 years. Right. And do not segregate or filter out the ones that resold. Now you got 10 years worth of expireds here, mm -hmm. right? Which should be thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands, depending. Right. But you got this big folder here that you can chip away at. Okay. Now you're calling and saying, Hey, I saw your house was for sale like a year ago, whatever happened with that. Right. And so I, one thing I want you to start doing, bro, is that, when you're calling for circle prospecting and expired, even a for sale by owner, even an internet lead, I want you to use whatever the situation, what agents do is they, they, they put their self in a box and within the conversation and, and they're, they, they focus so much on that house, that house for circle prospecting, that house where, where, uh, that expired the for sale by owner. Right. And, what I'm saying is, is let's use that as an excuse just to get them on the phone so we can talk to a human in our market. Right. Nothing. Right. So, so when I'm calling an expired, it's the same exact thing. I'm just trying to, to get in with them to start a conversation to see if there's a possibility of, you know, some back and forth to make them feel comfortable. Right. But then like when I called expireds like three weeks ago in the Red X bootcamp, I, I did 64 dials in 30 minutes. I talked to eight people and I had four great conversations, right? Four leads that want to do stuff, right? Want to buy stuff. They all wanted to buy something. And all four leads that wanted to buy something, what they wanted to buy had nothing to do with the property that expired, right? One was under contract. It was like it expired, but it was under contract. And I kept talking to him, come to find out he wants to buy a condo and da, da, da. He'll pay cash. Boom. I sent that to the team to see what they can do with them. Two, two of the other guys were builders looking for lots to build on, commercial builders. Um, one of them didn't even know what the house was I was calling about, right? Because I'm not calling about the house. I'm calling to try to get someone on the phone. It's like a wrong number. When I get a, one, of them was a, one of them was a wrong number. And it just get me on the phone with someone and let me start talking to them. Tell them what I do. See how they're doing today. See what I can do to help them. Are they looking for an agent? Right. But right there, when you got ran into the snag, it's like, you know, yeah, I don't know what I'll do or whatever. Say, okay, cool. Well, I mean, how did it go with your last agent? Why do you think it didn't sell? What are your plans for it? If you, if you decided to do something, would you use that agent again? Right. Just try to dig deeper into why were you trying to sell in the first place? Right. Just try to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. Just talk to them like they were your mom. Think about you should sit down and think about what are the questions that I asked my dad in, in the same situation, right? Or my mom or my cousin or my aunt or my uncle, my grandfather. What, what would I ask them? Let's make a list of questions. Let's see what would I ask them, right? If we were in that situation, if you called your dad and he's like, you're like, well, whatever happened with that? And he's like, well, I don't know. We just want to know what we're going to do, right? 
think about what how you respond to your dad, how natural and comforting that would be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. All right, bro. Listen, go slam some doors. <laughs> Yell at a bunch of people. Go outside and scream and slam a bunch of doors, man. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, um, who was your coach? Oh, I'm sorry. Who was your mm -hmm. coach? Oh, Benji was. Oh, Ben. Yeah. Was he, you, you enjoyed that experience? Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I wish yeah. I was in Hawaii instead of him, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No doubt. I want to go out there and visit. Cool, man. We'll keep crushing and let me or Ben know what we can do to help. Absolutely. Thank you for everything you do. Chris French. How's it going, man? Hey, buddy. Tell everybody who you are, where you're at, how long you've been selling, who your coach was. So my name's Chris French. Um, I'm out here. I live personally an hour from Morristown. I'm direct or Knoxville, Tennessee. So uh, I live right outside Morristown, Tennessee. So I'm an hour to Tri-Cities, an hour to Knoxville, but I focus on the greater Knoxville area. Uh, my coach was Dennis Sanders. Uh, basically my background, I've been selling as an agent since February was when I got my license previously before that, um, I was wholesaling and then, uh, I've got a used mobile home business where I buy and sell mobile homes too. So, um, that's my background. I originally got my license to basically help serve the people that, you know, we couldn't wholesale or couldn't buy and flip with, uh, just because, the way things were working, we couldn't really source it out to other agents and try and, you know, make some money off those leads. So I was like, I'm just going to do it myself, but ended up falling in love with this process, honestly, up to this point. So this has been my main focus. We'll try and build that side of things later. Uh, so that's basically my background. Got it, man. Got it. How, how did the program do for you? Um, honestly, whenever it was over, I, I told my fiance, pretty often like oh, I got that call coming up on Tuesday you know because I looked forward to it I was honestly kind of sad that it ended I wish it was still going I got so much value out of it um, with the wholesaling side of things you know I, I haven't been afraid of cold calling but I just got beat up so bad on the phones that I just got to a point where it was becoming difficult to do the job um, and so switching to this uh, and using the scripts I'm I'm enjoying my job and my work so much more than I did um, and I've got a better outlook with the help of Dennis. I've got a better uh, way of approaching things. A lot of it is just trying to, uh, for me personally, detach my feelings and my emotions from the results. I know that the results will come just being consistent with things. So uh, I got tons of value from it. Oh, great, man. And also, um, everybody should have got a survey that they could fill out. Um, I don't know if everybody did that where was a graduate of this, but I think one of the co if one of the coaches could plug that into the chat, if you guys didn't fill out that survey, um, that'd be good too. Cause we're looking for constructive criticism as well. Right. Like anything that you guys can bring up that we could do better that you think, Oh, you know, this would, it would be nice if this or nice if that, you know, obviously, you know, your biggest thing was you wanted to keep it going. Well, it's hard to, you know, go past 60 days. It's already completely free. Right. Um, right. And so, exactly. and it's not like you're not still connected to Dennis, to me, or that you can't reach out to us or that we're not here to continue helping you after the fact, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, our goal with this is to continue on our mission to help reduce the failure rate in the industry. And, um, we feel like giving you guys some personal one-on-one -on -one, hands-on, you know, touches for the people that really want this. Like we've got over 600 agents right now registered for the July 1st, and we can only take on like a hundred around a hundred or so. Right. So the demand is really high compared to, uh, what we can handle. Um, you know, so we're, we're, we're going to do the best we can do, but constructive criticism here too, guys. Um, you know, if, if there is any, right. And, and if we don't hear any of them, it's like, wow, you know, we're, we're, we're doing, we're doing some great work. Right. So I appreciate that, Chris. Um, anything I can help you with or any questions I can answer for you? No, uh, and just to touch on that, uh, by no means that I mean like, oh, you guys have left me out in the wind. I, I've learned so much from this to keep applying and build on. Um, I've paid for coaching before and felt like I got ripped off, and I can't believe this was for, for free. So uh, the biggest thing right now is just um, continuing to do what I need to do, and eventually the results are going to pay off. 
Um, I'm working with a couple of clients right now. I've built the email list to a little over 400 emails in that amount of time. I mean, it's, I know at some point all this is going to come back. I just need to be patient. So as far as help, I, I don't have any questions here. Just big thank you to you guys, because this is a, a big deal that I was, I was surprised I was even able to be a part of. Yeah, man. The people that, that we led into this program, it's literally random. There's no real rhyme or reason to it, honestly. So um, I'm glad you got a lot of value out of it, bro. Thank you, man. I want to jump in real quick and brag on Chris. He's grade A stud stock. I mean, he's been – he did a great job the whole time. And um, we're going to get Friday mornings rolling, Chris, so you'll be able to pop in and, you know, visit with all of my graduates on Friday mornings. I'll probably uh, – roll out of time for that next week so i'll send you a message bro we're not done we're just done with the 60 day challenge i appreciate you man cool cool thanks for that and uh robbie baker are you there yeah i'm here hey ricky how you doing bro man i'm fantastic how are you great man tell us about your experience so i didn't realize this but chris and i are just down the road from each other i'm in west knoxville um West Knoxville, Tennessee, um, been, uh, with, uh, Keller Williams realty since October. So new to real estate, um, still in my first year. Um, and Dennis Sanders was my coach as well. So, um, trying to keep things in Tennessee, I guess, but, uh, man, just, just blessed to be a part of the program, blessed to go through the, through the, through the process. Um, yeah, since January, I've done about eight transactions, um, paid for some coaching kind of right out of the gate um really felt like I was getting taken advantage of so to just to have the blessing to have Dennis mentor me over the last several months like um this I like I can't say it enough man this has been a real blessing for me great man anything I could do to help you any questions anything you're having trouble with yeah I mean I'm trying to make a transition to where I can focus my energy on real estate full-time um when I when I transitioned from my previous career you know I started off consulting part-time so I give about four hours a day to that and I and I realize if I can keep my my schedule managed properly I shouldn't need to be doing that um and so yeah I think it's just splitting my day in half I need to kind of figure out how to manage it sometimes getting three hours or nine hours of phoning in a week has been a little challenging through the challenge um but um yeah I think it's I guess if there's one question I'd ask you is you get excited about making calls. Um, phone almost always weighs 500 pounds when I get started, but once I'm on the phone, I get rolling. So maybe um, just some advice on how to get hyped up and ready to go. Well, the, the problem is, is that you're looking at it wrong, right? From the wrong perspective, as if it's like a chore or that people are going to be mad at you or something like that. So it's crazy because there, there's two sides of that, right? There's the, there's the batch within the call session of people who, probably will be a little awkward, not even me, just kind of a little awkward. And you're like, you're really magnifying that into like, that it's meanness and it's not, it's just that they don't know you. Right. It would be the same way that you would be if somebody were to call you or whatever. But if you get really good at communicating, which is what we're trying to teach you, right. You can turn those, you can, when you you can spot those awkward moments and turn them around. Like you see me on the phone when I did it a couple of weeks ago, I haven't posted these calls but it was just, man, I, I was like, wow, I, I still got it, right? Because I was taking these awkward situations and turn them around. Now they feel comfortable. And now we're having a full conversation. It was amazing. Um, and it's just something that you develop over time. But what you're seeing is, is the batch of those calls that might end up not even horrible, just like, it doesn't even hurt. Like nobody like punches you or anything. It's crazy. But you're looking at that when there's this other bat that you're not even thinking about of people who are going to love to hear from you, right? Who really want to hear from you, who need to hear from you, right? They're like, and you are denying them the ability to connect with you and do future business because you're scared of the people who that don't want to do business with you. It's crazy because the people that don't want to do business with you that, that end up like cussing you out or just hanging up or whatever, like they don't even affect your business at all. And you're denying the people during that same call session that want to do business with you because of these people that don't even matter. Right. And so you got to get to this place in your mind where it literally makes you laugh. 
you know, when people act a certain way, you know what I'm saying? Because it, because it honestly, it makes me laugh. It's just so funny. Like um, when people start being a little bit awkward or, or rude or something, I'll try to turn that thing around. But if they continue their, see, here's the thing. When they become rude, they're basically saying, I don't know you. So here's my rudeness. And then when I say, well, hold on, wait a minute though, here's who I really am. Right. And I show them that I, who, who I really am. And then they're still rude to me. That's when I start to become rude because now it's all on the table. They know I'm here to help them. They know I'm a nice person. I'm not calling with any kind of weird intentions, but they're still rude to me. So I'm almost at a point where I'm cussing them out and hanging up on them. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've actually done that. Honestly, um, you got to get to a place where you have a lot of fun with this, man. You're looking at it like it's a chore, like it's something bad, like it's something not fun. Bro, would you rather call people? Number there's a lot there's a there's a lot of things I could say, but you know, if, if, if would you rather call people or go out and work manual labor all day, right? All you have, listen, all you have to do is like move your finger a couple times and then do this <laughs> and then just talk, right? The dollar, super, does, the dollar does most of the work. It's super easy. Like it's, there's no physical labor here and you're blessed enough to have to do that to me. And you can make millions of dollars doing it. And then on the flip side, you don't do that, which is a very easy physical thing to do. Right. Because you're not comfortable doing it for what reason? I don't know. Cause I wouldn't be comfortable going out and roofing houses right now at 41 years old. But then I got to look at my kid in the eye and know on the back of my head, I didn't go as hard as I could go because I didn't want to do this. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. So can you have fun with it for me? Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, know that people are like smiling when they, when you like, you like answer the phone, there's going to be people that are mean, but there's going to be so many people that are like Robbie, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People need us, bro. Like closings are happening every single day with real estate agents. Why? Like all this talk, like years ago, you don't hear about it anymore, but years ago, people talk about real estate agents disappearing, right? There's still some people that try to say it here and there, but it's far and few between right now, right? Because we, we, it's proven, right? People need real estate agents and we'll continue to need real estate agents, right? Dude, mm -hmm. they need us. You can't deny them the opportunity to work with you because you care, you're hardworking, you're honest, you want the best for people. They need an agent like you, but because you won't put the work in to make the connection to plant the seeds for people that want to buy in the next three months, you're denying them the opportunity to work with a great agent as in yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, get out there and, and help people, man. That's what we're here for. It's a lot of work, bro. You do a lot of work for free. You know, you make so many calls and you feel like you're not getting anywhere, but I'm telling you, man, those email addresses add up. And before you know it, dude, when I lost everything and came back in 2008 and started back, that's after I learned all the lessons of the crash and all the, all the stuff, right. Made a million loss and all that stuff. It still took me from 2008 to 2014 to get to hundred deals a year, six, six years of 15 hours a day reverse looking up on spokio and bigfoot.com copying and pasting each each mailing address to get the phone number and it's like not even that copying pasting the the mailing address and then it didn't work then i have to put their last name in there and see if that works then i have to put the zip code in there like i had to try it three different ways for for most of them and you can just go click click boom and just start triple dialing thousands of people in your market please man please please take advantage of this. Thanks. All right. Good stuff, man. I'm going to, I'm going to move on. Is it, is it Kasha? I'm sorry. I'm butchering this. Oh no, you actually did pretty good. It's Kasha. Yeah, I had it. <laughs> okay, cool. Now give us uh, tell us where you're located. So I'm in Phoenix, Arizona and uh, yeah, I've been, I've had my license for six years. I want to say had my license because I've been on the support part of it for like four of them. And okay. then just switched probably like two years ago into like full-time sales. Yeah. So I want to say full-time agent for like two years now. Got it. Who was your coach? It was Marilyn. Oh, great. Great. So how was your experience? 
It was actually really good. So first of all, thank you for making this free for everyone. <laughs> it's not, yeah, you don't see that every day. And then I think my biggest takeaway from the program was just like making it a different perspective about calling. So for me, it's not, everybody's used to just like instant gratification. Okay, if I don't get the listing the next day or in a week, I'm probably failing. Once I like kind of switched my mind to, okay, I'm really here to make relationships and help those people like in a genuine way, it kind of took like the pressure off calling. So it was like, okay, if I don't make an appointment today, it's totally fine. You know, it's practice in just making those calls versus just like, okay, I got I got to make an appointment. I got to go get the listing. So kind of once you take that away, it's kind of like you're calling your, I don't want to say your friends, <laughs> but it kind of seems like it. Right, right. No, no. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, that, and that's what it is. It's friends. <laughs> the whole thing is to create as many friends in the market as possible. Cool. Now that that's good. That's good. Anything, any questions or anything you think I could help you with today? No, I think it was really good. Think you're good? I really enjoyed it. Yes. Okay. So yeah, no. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you for participating. And um, I hope everything continues to move in a positive direction for you. Thank you. Rick. You're welcome. Shelby. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Big guy. <laughs> i'm doing great living the life how's everybody oh, yeah. doing out there oh man we're we're the same man we're just we're just living that life good so to hear tell, tell everybody uh who you are where you're at how long you've been selling who your coach was okay no problem yeah my name is shelby i'm in the san antonio market here in texas i actually just hit my second anniversary date uh, on the first here so i've been in the game for about two years and uh, Chris was my coach, Chris Furman. Okay, cool. All right, how did you? How did the program go for you? It overall went really well. Um, I haven't been dialing for very long, mm. so it was kind of like trying to drink from a, a fire hydrant type of deal. So um, I went into it thinking, you know, hey, I'm jumping in with both feet. Can't let anything stop me. No excuses type of deal. So uh, really, what Chris said, I did. Uh, those first couple of weeks were pretty brutal. Uh, not, I wasn't very good on the phone, but I'm getting better. And so it was, uh, it's been a great eye-opening experience. I started seeing some results here recently. I've been really about one solid lead every week, but my database has grown. You know, I was making 40 contacts a day. So my, my database has grown quite well. Very pleased with that. Got it, man. What, uh, do you have any questions for me or what, what can I do to help you increase volume today? I think you've already done it, man. Uh, making this all free, taking the time to put out the content that you do and, you know, and connecting me with Chris and, uh, connecting all of us with all these great coaches. So I, I really don't have any particular questions. Um, just kind of <laughs> making it work as I go, but I really appreciate all you've done and, and the time you guys have all taken to, to help us out. No, absolutely, man. Absolutely. We're here to help you, bro. So thanks for participating and um, congrats. And I hope everything just continues to, to crush it for you. Shelby's definitely going to crush it. Yeah, uh, he's doing exactly. <laughs> he's following the program to the T. He's doing script practice. He's basically the epitome of what uh, he should be doing. So I'm excited to see the future of uh, him doing 30, 40, 50 deals a year. 100 deals. Nice. Come on, bring it. <laughs> yeah thank you kind words <laughs> nice nice sonia yes uh hold on oh boy oops hello <laughs> hi, hi how are you i'm great thank you yes ma'am so um i can't see you but that's okay tell everybody um who you are where you're at how long you've been selling and who your coach was sure uh, this is Sonia Rivera. I'm in, in Victorville, California. And my coach was uh, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been licensed since 2022, but I was not full-time. I was just a part-time agent. I, I became full-time about five years ago. Okay. Yes. You said, two th you mean 2012? 
Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I saying? Since uh, oh, sorry, 2002. Okay, 2002. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. I was, I was looking like, at my calendar. Got licensed and so um, so yeah um, that's the year I got licensed. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was working at the post office for you know, for about 17 years. So it was kind of hard to work at the post office and be an agent it was, and raise a family. So no, I, I totally yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. Cool. So how did the program do for you? Oh, I really enjoyed it. I, you know, I really love every, all the whole, all the training. It really shows you a different way, of course, you know, to give the customer, well, the customer services a little bit more than that you know it's um, making the relationships you know having people like know that you're not just you know looking for a sale or a salesperson you're actually a real person and like to be a friend and building relationships is what makes your business and that's why uh, you know say like the clients that I have they've been my clients for years and yeah. uh, because you keep that relationship going Right. And, and that's very important because um, I had an experience that I went, um, one of my past clients called me, I sold their house and they called me that they're ready to sell. Uh, when, when I came to visit, they said, you know, we had um, another, a friend that had a realtor and he kept pushing his realtor on us. And the guy came to the house and gave him a presentation. I'm like, dang, that's crazy. You know, I could have lost this client. Mm -hmm. But because of our relationship, he says, no, he says, Sonia is selling our home no matter what. She's right. our agent. So that was like, you know, that's one of the things that we need to keep that in mind. We're easily, um, you know, we could be what is, out if we don't keep that relationship. A hundred percent. What can I do to help you increase volume today? I mean, that, if you guys don't realize, like, that's the number one question I've got for every single mm -hmm. person, because that's literally all I'm trying to do every day, all day long. How many agents can I help increase their volume? So, Sonia, mm -hmm. what can I do to help you increase volume today? You know, the, the thing with with me and I don't know what it is, I, I get off track, you know, Okay. and that's my problem. I know that's my problem. Because okay. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I do. She, she, she has a, she has a squirrel problem. No, I, I have a what? <laughs> a squirrel problem. We always laugh about yes. her squirrels. Yes. So, but uh, yes. we get around track. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do have a squirrel problem. I easily get sidetracked some, somewhere else. Right. You know, and so, that's so my. It problem. sounds like maybe a lot of people that have the squirrel effect. It's one of two things. Like they either don't have their systems in place yet. So they're trying to mm -hmm. figure out what the systems need to be that work best mm -hmm. for them. Because once mm -hmm. you figure out what works best for you, then you go all in on those few activities and you basically say bye-bye to everything else. And you go all in right here, right? That was like me. Whenever I came up, I, you know, the circle prospecting, the weekly email, direct mail, that was my thing. I went all in right there. Like I was so oblivious. I didn't even see social media. I didn't even see the stock market crash of 2008. Like I didn't know any of this was happening. Like all mm -hmm. that stuff. Cause I was so laser focused on mm -hmm. the things that were working for me. And I really wrote, cause I knew that those things would ride me to that hundred deals a year mark. Right. And beyond. So, right. um, so either they, either they don't have their systems in place is while they have this squirrel effect where they just mm -hmm. chase every little shiny penny, or mm -hmm. they may have some systems in place, but they have this thing in the back of their head, like, Oh, well, maybe there's something better over here, or better over there. And mm -hmm. so they, they kind of try to venture out and find other things. Right. So, you know, Kevin can work with you on this, but the thing is, is like, you, you've got to, to, to really figure out what works best for you and go all in and fully commit. Right. And when you fully commit, you've got to be very disciplined around those activities. Yeah. Like when I was making calls, I literally didn't take any calls, answer any emails, text messages, nothing. I was mm -hmm. just focused on making the calls. And then after the call session, then I could do whatever I wanted to do. See, you mm -hmm. reward yourself when you get through those moments where you have to be super disciplined. You know, in the back of your head, you can just go crazy afterwards and, and, and call everybody back and put out all the fires and do all the reactive mm -hmm. stuff. But if you're not doing the discipline work, 
You're always yes. just going to be that average to low producer. I'm not saying yeah. you are. I don't know what your production mm -hmm. is. I'm just saying mm -hmm. in general, agents that are just reactionary 100% of the time never see that exponential growth, right? So at some That's point, fine. it has to be about volume of new people, new conversations into your ecosystem, into your database, right? It yeah. has to be. And it has to happen on a consistent basis for an extended long term period of time for you to really reap the benefits. And you, I mean, look at the five new friends a day theory of five new friends a day over five years of 6,000 friends. Your met, your business is massive at that point. Massive. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're, you're doing so like you're, you're closing like 10 deals a month and all this crazy stuff at that point. But in the first year, maybe you, you know, you might sell 20 or 30, like the five new friends a day doesn't look real glamorous when you're doing it or in the beginning years or whatever, but you got to visualize that five year point where the accumulation of it all ends up hitting. And there's this inflection where it's like, wow, I got more business than I can handle. And I don't even need to prospect anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're just reactionary yeah. forever, that's all you're going to do is be reactionary for the rest of your life. Cause you're never going to have that huge residual business coming in from past clients and referrals. Cause you didn't spend your time building that database up and less people know who you are than, sh than who should know who you are. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I agree with you hundred percent. And I, I want to talk on Sonia real quick. When we first started, she was, she was all over the place. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, fortunately we did get some systems put in place and I was really shocked. Um, she didn't have a certain client base, but she didn't have any, uh, no database put together. And I said, you know, let's go ahead and let's extract the, the phone numbers out of your phone, the, your sphere of influence. Let's find out who we have. Let's put it in a, in a database and, and see what we can do. We ended up pulling 5,000 people out of her phone <laughs> for her to be able to start calling. That was her first call list. And uh, mm -hmm. it was just amazing on what we were able to do with Sonia to put the systems in place and, and mm -hmm. get her on track now. And I'm really proud of her. She's done great. Thank you. Thank cool. you, Kevin. Good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. I think I missed Nikia. Is it Nikia? Is it Nikia? I'm sorry. I'm, I, I butcher names. It's Nikia, but she jumped off. She had to go pick up her kids. Okay. Nikia. Okay. All right. Dennis. What's going on? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Dennis. I'm from Tampa, Florida. So I mean, my sophomore year of real estate. So, oh, I like that sophomore yeah. year. See, that's beautiful to say it like that because yeah. in college you pay to learn, in real estate you get paid to learn. Yeah. Right? It's an incredible concept. So, who was your coach? Uh, it was Tyler. Tyler Higgins. Okay, great, great. How did it go for you? Amazing, man. He's he's great. Very patient guy. He definitely knows his stuff. So. Up me time block my whole day my schedule literally from like you know the, the working hours that i kind of want to be on it so it's good the only thing is just getting the time to put in the effort to do it so yeah 100 percent. so what do you what are you doing full time this is it real estate's full time <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. walk me through a typical day typical day so super prospecting this is on monday so 10 a.m to 12 super prospecting with red x or either my contacts or my own sphere of influence. So through, he basically, he tapped into the same thing that the previous coach mentioned, I think it was Kevin, maybe. Um, just go through your phone calls and, or your contacts in your phone and then just call everybody and just see how they're doing and try to grab their email, so. Well, the, well the, this, is, this is what I'm thinking, right? So when I say, take me through a typical day, I'm expecting you to okay. say, okay, from eight to nine, I do this. From nine to 11, okay. I do this. From 10 to 12, I do this. From Then I have lunch. Then one to four, I do this. I got you. So wake up, six, uh, cardio and read, seven to eight. That's uh, around that time. Get back home from 8.15 to 9.15. I get breakfast, get ready for the day. So shower or whatever it is that I got to do. And then 10 to 12, sick of prospecting, 12 to one, well, it's going to be my Go ahead. What, what happened between eight and 12? No, from I eight, mean, and then sorry, I sorry, eight, eight to 10, eight to 10. So from eight fifteen to nine fifteen, I have like get ready kind of thing. And then either if I have to do laundry or anything like that, I just kind of use that little gap to get got my day you, going. Got you, got my you, coffee, got you. Anything like that. Got so you. I 10, I hop on the calls for two hours. Okay. I have check pending lease from 12 to one. Try okay. to sneak in some food in between there. And then go into sphere influence. So on Mondays, I have my Instagram. 
So like online social media, and then I have Facebook on Tuesdays, Wednesday, Instagram. So I go back and forth uh, throughout the days. Okay. And then on Friday, I basically just follow up with everything, just wrap it up. So anything that I miss, any messages that I miss from anybody, or if I didn't reply or didn't open or anything like that, that's kind of what I do on that. Then I have a little bit of time from two to three, which is same thing. So dishes, get ready for the later half of the day. And then I have from three to five, I have it as like passive work, which is like content creation or emails. So from three to four, I do any sort of post that I'm going to make for the day. So how, so how, how, how hard is it for you to stay on track with this, with this? hundred, uh, Like it's pretty hard. It's, it's there. Like I try to do most of it. So, but I feel like some is better than none. So I try to stick through it throughout the day. And so I get into a routine. I would say the most important part of it is the eight is the 10, the 10 to 12, right? Yeah. I feel like if you can get that 10 to 12 done and then mm -hmm. you just stay busy the rest of the time, then you're going to be great. Yeah. Right. You're going to be good. What, what can I do to help you? <laughs> I mean, you guys have done everything, dude. This is an amazing program. The zero to 60 is awesome. So highly recommend it to anybody. Tyler wise. I mean, he's great. He's amazing. So he's clearly broken down all this from, I used to have it like just active work 10 to three and it was just a blob essentially of a time block. And then he's like, no, we need to go in like deeper into it. So we broke down things. And then on Tuesdays, actually the super prospecting is only on Mondays. On Tuesday, I have expired listings. On Wednesday, it's like for sub owners. Um, so, you know, he's definitely like gave us some variety so I don't get tired or bored or kind of discouraged from the phone calls. Uh, we all know that every time we dial, there's always going to be that nasty person out there that's going to yeah. kind of help your day. You just got to get in the mindset of like, just laugh it off like you mentioned. So, Right, man. Well, good, man. We'll keep crushing it. Let me know what I can do to help you. Let me know, let Tyler know what you can do to help, what he can do to help Sounds you. Good. Appreciate you guys. Guys, we got six minutes here before we got to hop on our team call. Um, so I'm going to rush through the these last few. Um, so, but we can, you know, you guys know you can hit me on Instagram. You can reach out to me. Um, always here to help, uh, of course, whoever your coach was. Um, but Rob, are you there? Yeah, Ricky, I'm here. It's uh, for me, it's been, I've had a, an identity theft crisis since May 10th. Uh, my LinkedIn page went down. It's, it's just been just passwords and trying to get logged in again. Kevin was my coach. Really great. Didn't get to finish because of all this stuff that started happening in May. Um, and so I really interrupted. I was just, I was doing great. I was going on door to door in my neighborhood, letting everybody know who I am and getting them on the email list and, and sending out regular emails. I missed two weeks of regular emails because of all this stuff. It's, it, I, I feel like a fool, man. It's just like, they got all my information. And so I've had to put my real estate business almost for a month on hold. And it's scary because I, I had a closing. Thank God I got some money in. But right now I'm in a world of pain. I'm still trying to figure my way out of this thing. Just signing into uh, iCloud is, or my I, uh, Apple ID account is, is just a nightmare. Well, I hate that happened to you, bro. Um, I hope that, uh, I hope it gets all cleared up, um, you know, really soon. Um, yeah, now that, that sounds horrible, bro. That, I mean, I had uh, somebody, somebody stole my phone, like ported my number to a different uh, carrier and literally stole 200,000 worth of uh, Bitcoin out of my uh, yeah. account. Right. So that stung. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got hit there too. But, um, you know, um, it, it just, it yeah, just you, broke my side, man. I was, yeah, I was doing you, yeah. Listen, man, just work really hard to kind of get it past you, get that momentum back, you know, and yeah. just keep keep plugging away that's all we can do what can i do to help you uh you know you've got a, a world of good stuff out there and i really appreciate you and kevin's been really fantastic in delaying my graduation uh, to help me get through this because i just wasn't available I, I i couldn't even i didn't have an internet for a while just so i could mm -hmm. throw them off track um i don't communicate with them anymore so they've actually I had to pay them. I, what I did was pretty dumb. I was pretty gullible. I got to admit. So uh, it's really compromised a lot of things, including the phone I'm talking on right now. I have no idea, but uh, I got a new phone. So it's, it's, it's just been complete hell. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm, 
know what else to I say. I can imagine, man. Well, listen, we'll be praying for you on this, and you let us know what we can do to help, man. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Um, Megan. Hey, Ricky. Um, so I'm from Houston, Texas, and Stephanie Hungerford was my coach. Um, so, yeah, she was awesome. It went good? Yes. Um, it was good accountability and also just, like, real life, like, a real human going through real situations mm-hmm. in life, mm-hmm. me and her connecting on that level, too. Yeah. And I felt like she kind of, like I told her, I was like, I felt like I was just kind of waiting around a little bit, you know, yeah. questioning a lot of things in my life and like just her kind of coming into my, you know, world kind of helped me take action again. Like, okay. Yeah. So yeah. That's incredible. Good. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, I think we've chatted and stuff back and forth. So yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Tiffany, are you there? Hi, Ricky. Can you hear me? I can. I can. Sorry, I'm driving, so I don't know if it's, it's going to okay. go out. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been selling? Where are you? I'm in Fort Lauderdale area, Florida. So I sell in Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. Okay. Um, I've been selling. I've been selling for 13 years. Okay. So and who was your coach? Probably one of the. My coach was John Hamrick, and okay, he's amazing. Great. Oh, good. Good. Great. Um, cool. Cool. Well, um, I hate to cut you short. Um, I, I gotta be on another zoom call in literally 60 seconds, but, um, I thought this was amazing guys. Uh, I've got this recorded. I'll send this out to the coaches. If you guys want a copy of this to listen to again or share with whoever, I'll probably post this on, on a YouTube or something. Cause it was so good. Um, but I just want to tell you guys, um, how proud I am of you. And I uh, just want you to keep just plugging away. Like if you just keep working, all your dreams are going to come true. Um, there's a very, very high level of patience in this business. There's that gray area where you can be really content and happy with where you are, but yet super motivated and hungry to go to the next level. I think most people live in either one side or the other, and it really messes them up. They're either really happy and lazy or very unhappy and super motivated. And I think we need to really harness and I've, I've done a good job at it, but I can do a lot better. And I work on it every day to try to harness that, that middle ground between the two. Um, because every, it's hard to not compare yourself to other people or not even compare yourself to the, your future self, right? A lot of times we're comparing ourselves to our future self. And that can also be a dangerous game to play, but we got to stay hungry. We got to keep trying to progress to the next level, but there's got to be a level of, we're also happy people, right? And i um, happy with where we are in life. So um, I love you guys. I'm glad that um, you found a lot of success with this. We're going to continue helping you guys as much as we can. And um, you guys take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Thank Ricky. You, Ricky. Yep.